people at home. At home, okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, but the truth is, is that uh, uh, I came from, I'm born in, in the north part of Iceland, in Akureyri. I came to Reykjavik um, uh, 21 years old to, to study at then Icelandic College of Art and Craft. And uh, there was uh, this uh, change of uh, times in the school from uh, a classical school of modernists. It was founded by the, by the modernist second movement after the Second World War, who sort of utilized the ideas of uh, De Stiel and Russian constructivist and Bauhaus that came about. But they were different in the sense that uh, uh, Dieter is born in 1930, and uh, uh, he is uh, 15 years old in the end of the war. He is 20 years old, 1950, and he is starting to uh, working as a graphic designer, educated as a graphic designer, and an artist in, um, in the 50s. And they experienced uh, uh, Europe as a big, big wound after the bombing and things like this. And uh, they were so, so uh, much on a mission to uh, um, as an artist to shape a new world without any tat of uh, nationalism or uh, even, even not to abandon character, to just to take all the fat out of art and become a structuralist with no figurative language, no, nothing, to, nothing sensational, just total basic things, starting to use the typeface Helvetica, who was born and the universe is born, and this uh, thing of uh, structural thinking, mm -hmm. the grid, and Swiss typography and Swiss architecture, and everything comes to the same. And this is sort of the background. And the Birtingur, the Brian, magazine Brian was uh, mentioning, was the magazine of this generation in Iceland. And the school was also their school of this, uh, of this generation who founded uh, sort of the art education on a higher level in Iceland. And, but uh, during this time in the 70s, mid-70s, when Dieter comes to the school, he uh, has left all this and, uh, and because it was becoming a style, a style without any content. And, and Dieter actually uh, did uh, some mouse paintings. He was, uh, before he died, 1998, and uh, the asshole died on my birthday, 5th of June. So uh, the strange relation. I worked a lot with him, uh, doing lots of projects, and still work for his family uh, and his legacy, and uh, making Dieter Roth bars. The fact is, he changed the classroom into a, a pub, and we were drunk for one month. I learned uh, a lot in art history, art history in a gossip form, uh, and uh, sort of everything I learned has been in a, yeah, in this way of when you were speaking at. Uh, at the bars in a deep uh, confidence and in a gossip form. That's my background. I had to clean my shit up and go to detox and rehab. Part of my rehab was to go to Vancouver in British Columbia and study graphic design, get out of this bohemian lifestyle. And uh, uh, this is 1986, two years after I, I uh, come to Vancouver. Uh, the uh, a little box came into the school and said, hello. That was the Mac. 1988, I saw the Mac for the first time. They had had some Ataris and uh, Amiga Commodores, but, you know, not that interesting. Until she said hello. <laughs> I never studied HTML or all what later can do. I've never been a programmer, but I desperately need programmers and they desperately need us. We do, the, we do the toppings, they do the groundwork, and uh, we need each other badly. Not always love, not at all, but uh, it's a desperate need. And uh, uh, the thing is, uh, 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 when I am, I teach, I've been teaching graphic design, is I came because, uh, from Vancouver, because uh, I sort of belong to the first generation who studied this within this environment. And I had to make the change in Iceland, to change it from analog to digital. And uh, uh, I never select students from technical point of view. I always, they're always selected from uh, uh, having the ability, ability to visualize with the drawing skills, high level of drawing skills because we are shaping the future 
with our hands. It always starts with a sketch and the ability to visualize. And we are not going to have any influence on people because it is sort of a, a power tool. The, the digitalization of the world is a very powerful phenomenon. And uh, I have problems looking at, uh, at the web as a material. It is a very political tool in my, I look at it as a tool. And uh, for sure it has um, content material in the sense what kind of material is in the web. And what is this really? And uh, uh, they say here in the introduction, 20 years of the web and we are still at the very beginning of understanding and implementing digitization. For the first time, we are facing a generation that never got to know the offline world. By nature, they are riding the wave without ever having touched the ground. We might have unlearned our ancestors' knowledge about materials and crafts. It is easy to overlook the intrinsic characteristics of the web, of the web in favor of the newest framework or boilerplate. Let's re-explore the material web and evaluate what we have learned so far, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, uh, to see this happen, from uh, changing from the analog into the digital and knowing everything we were, we were doing was a, a, a reflection of the world that was. We are using the same tools, but they are just virtual tools. We are using the same concepts and, uh, and the categories, uh, but we have to just uh, translate them into something virtual. We are combining text and images, and uh, we are uh, manipulating words, we are manipulating images, and we are doing interior design in people's mind. Make them buy things, make them uh, 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 vote, make them do this or that, entertain them, and influence them. That's what we are doing. And we are the, uh, working for people who, sometimes we are in a service industry, we are working for people who want something, like who have political interests or, or, or financial interest, but usually we hate it, we want to be, we have also an underground community of people who are really working uh, underground and changing all these people's minds, and making them not buying things. No logo day and, and all kinds of uh, what we call um, as a turning, a detourment, turning things upside down. We love that. We have secret places and underground action teams working. Uh, working. We have a special net for that. Anyway, the world how it was. You know, these are our toolboxes. And this is just a, a virtual tools. And they represent, we see the paint box, we see the exacto knives, we see the uh, pans and, the, and brushes, magnifying glass shishes, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, great, you know, all kinds, of, all, all kinds of tools we knew from the analog world. This came in the early 90s, and we thought, you know, Netscape, this would be the only um, browser. Uh, we, we only knew Netscape, but we never imagined that this could be many, many, many browsers. And there were so many things, we, we sort of were so surprised when this was happening. And everyone said, well, this might develop in the next five to ten years. No one suspected how fast it went in every way. And uh, slowly, uh, this went all over the place. And uh, we got uh, slowly, in maybe five, or maybe ten years, we got a generation who had muscle memory and uh, who uh, didn't know the analog world and didn't know how this was done. And it was more and more difficult to explain because it was easy to teach people who knew the world as it was, but difficult to, to teach people who had no idea how it was. And also, they became hypersensitive. They started to hate the digital world. They had this urge to feel a real, real tool and real stuff, real material. And all of a sudden, all the courses in crafts, in silkscreen, in letterpress, were full. In the, in the beginning of the century, 2003 to 2005, it changed. 
and people started to mix this together. High tech, low tech, low tech, low fi, low tech with high tech, hi fi. You know, and we got in music and art, um, um, Icelandic bands like Moom, you know, trying to be with children's uh, 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 instruments and high tech instruments, you know, all, all these kind of things. And uh, 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 what, was, what was so good, because I, 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 I sort of, like I said, I never learned HTML, I never became a programmer. I was always a, a failure in mathematics, and uh, I was a college dropout. I was kicked out of uh, art school because of being drunk with Dieter, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't hold uh, a degrees because uh, 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 creative arts were not on a university basis until late 90s, really, except in some stupid institutions in North America. But uh, even my school, Emily Carr, on Granville Island, Vancouver, only did a change in the early 90s after I left. I was in the preparation committee to make it happen, and I was also in the preparation to make this happen and changing the Icelandic College of Art and Craft into the Iceland Academy of the Arts in the end of the century. And also starting the MA program. And these are two, two long stories. But anyway, we are facing this uh, with, uh, when she said hello, you're facing this because you could navigate visually. You could navigate by icons. And you didn't have to know, you didn't have to write codes. You could navigate visually. That was a key for our creative department. I always loved the bomb when we had a crash. And also all the typefaces, they were also bitmapped. And they had these uh, city names because they were used for the for the, uh, uh, what is it called, the, 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 the drive, and whatever it is, anyway. Because you see, the thing is that we are changing into this from this. These are the tools, you see the exacto knife, the pens, the pro proportion wheels, and the, 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 everything which is on the tools are there. And we had to do this analog draw, this took so much time. It was, uh, it took, um, it, what, what simply happened is that what took so much time, maybe weeks to do, you could do in hours. And also, it was much cheaper. You didn't need uh, 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 expensive chemicals and things like that. Light table, the screen in most, uh, the screen for, uh, in, um, in software for creative people is usually just a replica of a light table. You're working on a light table. And you, we use uh, uh, um, Transfer paper to draw through. We have uh, file systems, you know, to store our, our files. And we have our toolboxes. And we have drawing pens uh, in the beginning, and then rotring or coin or pens. And the most common movement of uh, designers and creative people was this movement here. To get the, because it was always, the, you know, the, the ink was uh, stuck in the pen nib. And then the next most common movement was this here. I think, you know, waiting for the bloody computer to work. It was so lazy in the beginning. And uh, um, yeah, this is the Kohenor and the rulers. We, it was so difficult to make, you know, we, we, before we start to uh, master the vector line, we only, always used just, you know, uh, Adobe, Adobe Illustrator. We, uh, there was also an animal called uh, Freehand. Uh, they lost. <laughs> they lost. Freehand lost, and everything lost except Adobe. Exactly. Yeah, still the French core? Yes. <gasps> Absolutely. Uh, up, because you see, this is the comeback. Can you hold your hand up? <gasps> he, is, he is on it. <laughs> I said, he is, he is a progressive <laughs> guy. And the, uh, this, uh, this uh, metric system of uh, the, the typography points, you see, are pi class. No one understands. We don't really need this anymore, but it's still used. And again, you got this one too. Uh, yeah. Atom, yes. And the, al always the problem was to reduce and enlarge. So we had uh, some, um, some Lumex, some. Um, um, uh, to, uh, to be able to enlarge uh, 
uh, episcopes, and we had to use, you know, I really to enlarge this 135 percent, and we had a proportional wheel who could tell us how much it, you know, from uh, from 10 centimeters to 12 to uh, 18, how much or whatever it is, you know, and this was the holy room in all design studios, the Repromaster. Uh, which would uh, uh, reduce to 28% and enlarge to 400 something, maybe. Color separation was always a headache. We had to use uh, 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 registration pins and do layers and cut out uh, the uh, film, film, uh, um, the ruby lith film, to change colors. And using exacto knives to do this cut and paste. Oh, students start to, oh, you, can you cut and paste in reality? <laughs> you know, they... <laughs> because also, part of this is a changing of time. And also, we have to have in mind, we call this time sometimes postmodernism. And what does it really mean? The best definition was manipulating existing forms and ideas, like Andy Warhol. You know, he was not really the author of his own images, he was manipulating them. And he was working on the light table and using all these analog tools we are doing in the in the in this uh, in our creative environment, the exacto knife, the wax machine to glue to be able to paste. Nobody understands this anymore, you know. The wax had great smell, and drop shadow was a major job. There were only the experts in the office who could do this with a, a, a compressor. What an unbelievable talent who could do this. And also, can you imagine during this time, people were selected into the uh, uh, program if they were clean with clean nails. No dark uh, uh, stripe under the nails. And the reason was that we had to do business with the... Uh, with uh, uh, film people, and they hated the uh, uh, hair and shit on the, on the films. Dieter Roth was the first one to do it willingly. He, 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 he loved irritating people with dust and on, the, on the films. The use of dust, sometimes we say, it's common today. And, uh, but this means uh, we also had to live with and study and learn what, the, what, what are the secrets behind visual presentations? And that is usually the sacred geometry, and the consequence of that is the grid system. Divina proportione. It is not, uh, uh, it is, um, it is uh, a wisdom what is behind how, uh, how, uh, how the forms are generated. And uh, this is from uh, this uh, uh, it's a drawing by Da Vinci in his famous book of uh, Luca Pacioli, Divina proportione. And this has been done, you know, up to our times. The Eric Gill, you see there. And all the background system, the, 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 the holy, sacred geometry behind this whole. And it's always used. Design is what is behind. And so many people, they confuse this and say, you know, good or bad design by the surface. But it's not about that. It's about all the preparation work. Even the violins are designed. <clears throat> and we get this. This goes with the Renaissance man. The birth of the artist or the creator with name. A self-expression. I see something from one point. It is my point of view. And we also start to, instead of only publishing allegories or stories of wisdom, we start to write stories with such a self-expression, with our name. And we don't sign pictures until the Renaissance. The idea of copyright was ridiculous, as everyone understands in the world except Western people. Always complaining about Asian people not understanding the copyright. You know, copyright of what? You know, in the end we are not as original as you think. We are basically just typical. We can be original in the sense if we put our character into it, but usually we are not the authors of this. Not even what we say or tell. I hate this quotation, which is, uh, uh, which is John Lennon's quotation. Life is what happens to you while you're busy making all the plans. He picked it up by Maharishi Yogi, you know, 
o perdedor para his uh, guru, o perdedor para his guru before. You know, and then comes a guy, I said this, and you have to quote, you know, and we go to do our uh, essays in school. No, you have to use, uh, uh, where does this quote come from? You know, stupid. This is what is seen from one point. We frame things. And we use uh, the grid uh, to be able to fill in the grid. And we start with making perspective drawings, which we think are realistic. But they are only realistic from one point of view. We start to develop this into mapping the world. And we slowly map the whole world. And we start to be, in a, in a way, ready. We are making ourselves ready to do the web. <laughs> Polygons, ray tracing. We can even uh, uh, we can even uh, sort of uh, uh, yeah, uh, bend it. We can bend it. Someone talking about how can we bend the web? Yes, we can. And this uh, brings us to uh, Asher, who did more than one vanishing point. Interesting, to bend the web and make it, made it figurative. Also this way of thinking from figurative to abstract, this is what the, the generation of Dieter Roth was thinking, from figurative to abstract. It happened with people who were quite spiritual, like Kandinsky, Malevich, Mondrian, they were all deep in theosophy. It is like if you, you, if you do a meditation, Meditation is not about thinking deeply about something objective. It is about cleaning your mind. Because if you clean all the little figurative things around you, you will open a door into the space behind your eyes. And that is what David Lindsay is always trying to teach us. Transcendental meditation. Mondrian did it this way. He started to do a drawing of a tree. <coughs> I think the first drawing was with leaves, actually. And then, you know, it happened like this. You get it? <clears throat> and the, the dots of the black square of Malevich and the Russian constructivist. This is important because of the, because of the pixel. Even uh, the Bauhaus had the pixel. And even the Icelandic Academy of the Art had the pixel as logo. And this is interesting because of the context of uh, textiles in pixel art and textiles. This is the woman who did the Geneva, Susan Carter, something like that, who did all the city, city uh, uh, fonts in the beginning for the mark. Same, this is the Icelandic uh, uh, books, Shona Baikur, ornaments and patterns found in Iceland. And this is how it influenced the, 90, the 80s design. And this is what we mean. We have programmers on the left, and us on the right. You know, we need analytical thinking and analytical construction, but uh, it's just so boring, bloody boring. Some uh, people are always, or sometimes, uh, accusing us of binary thinking, and you know, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, binary. But uh, chess is a binary. But can you imagine what goes on in a chess game? That is more complicated than binary thinking, you know. Uh, there is an interesting thing about what makes things work, what makes things when you really influence people and uh, uh, you are sort of in the role of the ancient shaman. There is some confusion as to what magic actually is. I think this can be cleared out if you just look at the very earliest description of magic. Uh, I'm coming to something called grimoires. Grimoires is the, the book uh, a collection of signs that magicians or shamans used. We can see this in, in, in old, uh, there's lots of these manuscripts in Icelandic National Library, and uh, uh, tons of these, you know, Björks. Uh, Tattoo is one of these, very visit. The Bluetooth logo is one of these. And you 
uh, you know, this is the important thing. The grimoires, the signs, were used to influence, to put spell on people. And uh, our keyboard is to put spell on people. We call it spelling, you know. You know? And we are sort of, uh, we are sort of, uh, we are sort of working with people's minds. Change them. Make them believe in something they don't know about. Make them do something. And we, uh, are especially, we like to get to their unconsciousness. Because you never use rational thinking when you are buying things. You use rational thinking to justify what happened. You know, you have already bought this way back. <laughs> and uh, so the important thing is to go to uh, the uh, part of the brain behind the eyes. What is behind the eyes? And the best way to do that is to use icons. Uh, just to, just to, to, because I sort of, I, I, I sort of, uh, I know many artists, and also I teach this. Make up your own grimoire and start to play with it. And you see here one, uh, she's not my student, she's my colleague from the Icelandic College. She was the first uh, 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 head of uh, product design. And she just did this, did this recently, just with a dot and a line. Her beginning point is the dot, like a dot and the line between the two dots. And then she starts to uh, assemble it like uh, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach would work. Imagine Bach's fugues represented visually. She makes a, a 3D, um, uh, uh, so she, she, can, uh, she can both represent this visually and also she can do a, a 3D printer. And you see how magical, you see the faces in this. It's unbelievable variety of things he does. Same thing happens with one of my students who started in the early 90s. His name is Ausgier, Jon Ausgierson. He, he uh, and another student of mine, Frederick Ört Haraldsson, they are the ones who did the first spaceship for EVE Online. And they worked with, uh, with people who were programmers like Reiner Harlason and Torve Franz. And, but they are my department. They are the ones who did this. And the funny thing is how they do everything. He works now for Solid Clouds, the innovation house in, in Edestork. And this is from the new game they are doing. Uh, there, but they always start with something hand drawn insects. And the funny thing about uh, uh, the because futurism and what is in the future, and this, uh, this is the future here uh, that the all representations of future have been wrong, you know. There's an interesting uh, literature, the history of the future visions, and they're all wrong. Totally. And uh, uh, William Gibson, the, the, who sort of came up with the concept cyberpunk. And uh, I met, no, I didn't really meet him, but I, he was three meters from me on, on a stage <laughs> and a, in, a, in, a, in a theater on Granville Island in Vancouver because he comes from Richmond, one of the suburbs of Vancouver. And he's asked, uh, hey, um, uh, uh, yeah, first of all, he was always saying that uh, his science fiction books are not about the future, it is about our own times. They are contemporary. And he never used, he admitted, he never used computer to write his stories, always typewriter. He couldn't use uh, 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 computer uh, key, keyboards, it's possible now maybe, because he was, it was like uh, pushing your fingers through layers of mud, he said. There was no resistance. And you have to have this resistance and the sound. Max Headroom, you remember him? He lived in cyberspace. It's not the job of creative people to give the audience what the audience wants. If the audience knew what they needed, they, then they wouldn't be the audience. 
They, they would be the creative form givers. It is a joint, this is a job of the creative people to give the audience what they need. This is so important. It's just about because it is such a power we have in our hands. And we should not just sell it cheaply. We are not only in for the money, we are on a mission also to save this planet. With art and design, you can change yourself and other people's consciousness, thus causing the world to revert to normal, because we are astray. The future is handmade. Thank you. Thank you very much.